Praise the Lord. God bless everyone on this day that the Lord has made. A little rainy out there, but uh, I like rainy days. I'm sitting in my car, and I just enjoy the rain. It's nature, and I like the raindrops when it comes down on your car or in your home or windowsill. It reminds me when I was a boy, I uh, couldn't go outside to play, so I just look out the window and watch the rain. And um, I just felt closer to nature, and I still do. And it's also romantic if you're married or if you have someone, it's a good time to stay home and cuddle and uh, make some soup or something, some goitro, and just uh, enjoy each other's company, watch a movie, and just relax. It's, it's a romantic moment, so I like the rain for many reasons, but some people don't like it, but I believe that we need it. The flowers need it, and the reservoirs, and so God sends it. So let's appreciate everything that uh, we get from our Heavenly Father. I want to bring to you a message that uh, it's a teaching. It's more of a teaching. As you notice, I got my Indiana Jones hat. I don't play. When it's raining, I put it on. This this is waterproof. The water just bounces off it, man. I don't know if it's rockproof or bulletproof, but it's definitely waterproof. You can take it off and you can fold it up, you know, just put it in your back pocket or put it inside your trench coat. Look at this. <laughs> Indiana Jones was a bad dude, man, and he hooked up a nice hat. So with that in mind, I also have my raincoat. It's waterproof. Water just bounces off and bang, bing, boom. Doesn't connect. It's uh, Kevin Klein. Top of the line. I got style. Maybe just for a while. But um, it'll do me good. Got this raincoat. And I walk around in the rain like Gene Kelly. Just dancing in the rain. Scoo dooby dooby doo. So I feel good that uh I'm prepared for this. But I wanna leave a teaching with you. Something that been disturbing me for a while, but uh I don't need my sunglasses, right? Because it's rainy. The sun's not out. Let me leave it. Leave them off. <laughs> I always have sunglasses, part of my image or part of my uh, gizmo. My signature, it's okay. I've been disturbed by some of the teachings, singings, songs that I hear, see on worship services. Sometimes I miss church, so I catch a church service online. But today I was watching one of our local churches and the pastor was saying things and they were singing things that it's not biblical. If you really, really, really look at it, you really know your Bible, you really study your Bible, you know that it's not biblical. And so when I go to these churches and they're singing those songs, I can't get into it. I can't sing them. I just stand there out of respect because I'm there, but I can't sing these songs because it's not based on Bible truth. And everything is in the book. And if it's not in the book, <laughs> I don't want to look. Because <laughs> if you're not careful, you'll get hooked. Ah, that's not a good outcome. So I just want to bring a teaching to you so you can notice uh, the difference. Well, first of all, the pastor was talking about and singing about, Come, Jesus. Come. Lord Jesus. Now there are some cultural groups that are still waiting for their Messiah. And when we sing, come, Lord Jesus, it's like he's not here. We're waiting for him. But if I read my Bible, and I did, and I did a little research, which I knew already, but I brought it out, and it says here, in the book of John, the Gospel of John, you know your, your Bible, right? The Gospel of John, the very first verse, the very first chapter says, In the beginning was the Word, and you heard that before, right? And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then if you stroll down to verse 11, check this out. He came to his own. What does that mean? He came. And that seems to be past tense. If you want to get the right grammar, 
It's past tense. He came to his own and his own people did not receive him. And then if you stroll down to verse 14, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we saw his glory, the glory of the only son of the father, full of grace and truth. So this here tells me that Jesus already came. So why am I singing, come, Lord Jesus? You can answer that for yourself. That's like you invite me over to your house. Sam, come on over, man. We're having a dinner. We're inviting some people. We want you to be here. Be a part of this gathering. We're going to have some good food. And I show up, ring the bell. You let me in. I sit down in the living room or the diner table, dinner table. And uh, you walking around. So anybody seen Sam? I invited him. I hope he comes. He's got an open door invitation. I hope he checks out. The husband may ask the wife, honey, you seen Sam? I invited him. The wife may say, he's, he's here. I just don't walk in. I shook his hand and he went in there and sat down. He's here already. When we sing, come Lord Jesus, he already, I can't sing that. It's not biblically sound. I can sing, thank you for coming, Lord Jesus. I'm glad you came. <laughs> I'm glad you're here, but not come, Lord Jesus. You know what? For a sinner that doesn't know the Lord, that may go good with him. Because he's now invited Christ into his life and Jesus is coming into his heart for the first time. But the fact is that he already came. Sinners can come to him anytime. Because he already came. He's here already. So be careful with come, Lord Jesus. Another one he was saying is let heaven come. They were singing it for a long time. Let heaven come. Here's what the Bible has to say about that. When Jesus was tempted of the devil, he came out of the wilderness. He was tempted 40 days, 40 nights. He was fasting. It says here, the spirit of Mary drove him into the wilderness and uh, there uh, in the in the wilderness for 40 days, listen, tempted by Satan and was with the wild beasts and the angels ministered to him. Okay, we got that part. And then it says here in verse 14, and after John was put in prison, Jesus, watch this now, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. And this is what he said, saying, watch this now, the time is fulfilled the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. It says here that the kingdom of God is at hand. So if I'm praying or singing, let heaven come. My Bible tells me, according to Jesus, the kingdom of heaven is. Is at hand. And another scripture says the kingdom of heaven is within you. Jesus is speaking. So either Jesus got it wrong or we're getting it wrong. And I know it's a habit, it's a custom, and it's religion. It's religion. We got to change our theology. We got to change our concept because that keeps people in bondage. I'm still waiting for Jesus. I'm waiting for the kingdom of God to come. It's already here. It's at hand. The kingdom of heaven is in Christ. He is the kingdom of heaven. Everything is in Christ. Our joy, our li lives, our prosperity, our wealth, our health, our love, our peace, the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It wasn't a thing that you looked for. It wasn't a city. It was him. The person of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So when we sing, come Lord Jesus. I tap him in the back. Listen, I got news for you. Good news. He already came, pastor. And we as leaders, we got to be careful because that keeps people waiting. I'm waiting for Jesus to come. I'm singing, come Lord Jesus. When is he going to come? He already came. He's here. Again, that's like me going to your house. And I tell you, turn the lights on, Pastor Billy. And you said, the lights are on, Sam. No, but turn them on. The lights are on. Jesus already came. 
By faith, you can receive him. By repentance, he'll show up. Hallelujah. And then you can grow up. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. And the kingdom of heaven has already come. And you can read that in that in, in the gospel I just gave you, Luke. He already came. It's already happened. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is the person of Jesus Christ. So stop singing those songs. Come, Lord Jesus. Let heaven come. I can't sing those. I got to stop and say, I'll just listen. Tell you, these people don't know the kingdom of heaven has already come. He's already here. We don't have to wait for him to come. He's here already. And another one he said was, Holy Spirit fall. Holy Spirit fall on us. Now watch this one here. Let me go a little further with, with this. He said, Holy Spirit fall on us. If you go to Acts chapter, and I'm teaching you now, chapter 2. Listen to this. Chapter 2. The book of Acts. It says here <clears throat> in the very beginning, when the day of Pentecost had come and they were all together, all together, the disciples, because Jesus told, Jesus told them, go up in the upper room and wait. Another thing the pastor was saying is that we got to wait on God. Got to wait for the Holy Spirit to fall because he's going by that verse when Jesus told him to wait. Listen, we don't wait on God. God's waiting on us. He already did what he had to do. Can't do it again. He's waiting on us for this wait on God. There's a time when God may lead you somewhere and God may tell you, wait, it's not time yet. Well, I understand that concept. But here, to receive God or to receive the Holy Spirit, they waited because Jesus told them to wait, but it came already. It happened. And it's happening today. So this thing about wait, God's waiting on you to make a move. Everything's been laid out. Now, let me go ahead and finish this here. They're all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like a mighty rushing wind came from heaven. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Just waiting. It filled the whole house where they were sitting. There appeared to them tongues as a fire. God is a fire, passion. He appeared to Moses in a burning bush of fire. Jeremiah the prophet said, I got the word in me like fire. Shut up in me like fire. There's a passion in, in serving God and knowing him. Being uh, distributed and resting on each of them. Listen to this here. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them to speak. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit fell on them. Now, if that doesn't convince you, go down to Acts chapter 10 also in the book of uh, where the story of uh, Nicodemus, not Nicodemus, excuse me, um, Cornelius, Cornelius, they Nicodemus uh, was a um, Pharisee that uh, turned to Jesus, came by night, and uh, he received Christ. But here in Cornelius' house, while Peter was still speaking, in these words, the Holy Spirit fell mm -mm -mm, on all those who heard the word. The Holy Spirit, what? Sammy, did the Holy Spirit fall? It says it here in my Bible, the Holy Spirit fell mm -mm -mm. on all those who were hearing the word. The Holy Spirit already fell, man. So when you're talking, Holy Spirit fall on us. God would say, oh, I already did. Read the book of Acts. The Holy Spirit fell. Got to take out a bullhorn. Speak to some of us. I can't sing that. Holy Spirit, for I'm, I'm waiting for something to happen that has already happened. You receive it by faith. You receive it by faith in the word of God and faith in God. Read your Bible. Study it, man. 
Most people go to church, don't read the Bible, so they depend on the pastor. Okay? He's cooking up a cheap meal and he's giving it to you and you're like, eh. you know, you're eating the same stale food every time. Feed yourself. Be a spiritual chef. Cook your own meals. The Holy Spirit already fell. It says here, the Holy Spirit fell. Mm, mm, mm. Hallelujah. Praise God. Ay, ay, ay. Woo. And then another scripture says, the anointing that's in you, the Spirit of God that's in you, has an anointing that breaks and destroys you. It's already in you. Jesus said in the book of John chapter 6, that it's like a river in us. And it's flowing out. The Spirit of God is already in us. It fell to the believer I'm talking about. He said it'd be like in your belly, like a river of flowing. It's water. It's like a mighty rushing river. The Spirit of God already fell. That's why people get healed. If you preach the Word of God, people get saved. People get turned around their lifestyle. People get delivered and get healed through the power of the Spirit of God that's in you. So I can't sing, Holy Spirit, fall on me. He already did. I just got to act it out now. Come on, somebody. Are you listening to me? And then also you can go back in the Old Testament, the book of Joel. Joel, when he said in chapter 2, verse 28, in the last day, the Spirit of God shall fall upon people. Praise God. So stop singing those songs. And I'm not trying to make any trouble. I'm not trying to criticize any church. I'm part of the church. And I'll be criticizing myself. I'm just trying to uh, bring revelation to people, trying to wake people up, sound the alarm. I'm trying to tell people, listen, you got what it takes. The kingdom of God suffers violent and the violent take it by force. Just go out there and take it. We're not on the defense. We're on the offense. When Jesus said uh, the gates of hell will not prevail, doesn't mean they're coming at us and we have to hide and fight and who the kingdom the kingdom of the hell is coming at me no it means we're coming after them it means we're tearing down strongholds uh, it means we're attacking them through the power of the gospel when Jesus went into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil he didn't go in there because uh, he was weak he was uh, trying to hide from the devil he went there looking for the devil it's like uh, the, the, the good cowboy coming after the bad cowboy he's a man this town ain't big enough for two of us I'm looking for you I'm coming after after he went out in the wilderness looking for the devil to tell him I'm here. I'm in town. Bing, bang, boom. I've arrived. Uh, it's time for you to pack your stuff and get out. Uh, so I want you to know, my friend, that the spirit of God is in you. God has given you the power. He's given you the anointing, the spiritual authority to attack uh, the kingdom of hell, to tear down strongholds and to bring deliverance to the people of God through the power of the preaching of the gospel of Jesus. That's why I can't sing those songs. I'm sorry. Excuse me. I took off my Indiana Jones hat. Started to get a little chill, so I'm going to put it back. <laughs> Meet up, I am. <laughs> so come on, guys. You got to stop that. This man was saying, come, Lord Jesus. Let heaven fall. Let heaven come. Spirit of God fall on, Holy Spirit fall on. That already happened, man. The book of Cornelius, they were all sitting around listening to Peter, and the Spirit fell, bing, and baptized him. The book of Acts, they sat around, bing, and baptized him. So be careful. And another thing he said that bothered me, he says, uh, you know, some of you folks, it's coming down on people, some of you folks come to church to get fed. Yeah. Exactly. If I go to a restaurant and sit down and the waitress gives me a menu and I sit down at the table, I'm actually there to get fed. Not there to play dominoes. Not there to play bingo. I'm there to get fed. I'm in a restaurant. They feed people. I'm not going to ask the waitress, do you have any food here? It's a restaurant. That's what they have, food. And I'm here to get fed. If I go to a gasoline station and, 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 and they have uh, self-service or they may have somebody serving and I pull up and he says, what can I do for you, sir? I'm just here. Yeah, but do you, uh, you want any gas? No, I'm not here for gas. I'm just here. Listen, I go to church to get fed. Bottom line. 
I feed myself. I eat my own spiritual food. I study the Bible. I encourage you to do the same. But we go to church to hear a word from God. So that means our spirit needs to get fed so I can, boom, take it out. through. And there's some people that don't don't study the Bible, don't, don't, don't read the Bible. So they need to get fed so they can carry it out throughout the week. So yeah, pastor, we go to church to get fed spiritually. So if you're cooking up a storm, feed me. If you're not, then perhaps it's not me coming to church to get fed. It's you coming to church without food to give. Mm, that hurt. But yeah, we do go to church to get fed, man. So stop this. Some folks come to church to get fed. Of course we go to church to get fed. And I hope you got some of the, some food to give, some spiritual foods. So be careful with those. I don't, I can't get into them. We sing them in English and Spanish. I, I just can't get into it. I just stay there like, go ahead, finish up. Man, I want to encourage you. Jesus already came. You need to come to Jesus. The kingdom of God is at hand. It's already here. The Holy Spirit already fell. You have it in you. It's your job now to bring it out of you. So let me leave you with that thought. I hope you get this. If you don't like it, well, then you do whatever you want with it. And perhaps you'll criticize me. That brother's off, man. But um, I'm going by what the Bible says. <laughs> Not by uh, the Times newspaper or Daily News or Reader's Digest. I don't even know if they have that out anymore. I'm going with what the Bible says. So, God bless you. Pray that uh, God will bless you and strengthen you. Repent, Jesus said. God will bless you with everything you need to be victorious on this earth. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you. I praise you. I worship you. I exalt you. I magnify you. I love you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for breathing on us. Thank you for coming. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for Calvary. Thank you for resurrection power. I thank you the Holy Spirit fell is in us, Lord. I thank you for shining a light in us, Lord, and showing us the way, the truth, and the life that we have in Christ. In Jesus' name I pray, man. God bless you. Mm. Mucho amor. Love you.